Uh, unfortunately, my client, Amy Atwood, couldn't be here today. Um, she works at Takeda and does communications for the vaccines business unit. Um, and we collaborate on creating uh, creative communications to raise awareness and educate, obviously, um, around the impact of dengue. Um, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about a unique way of telling a story. Um, I think Somya did a beautiful job in, in telling you that the impact of dengue is not to be underestimated um, globally, especially, especially in regions where um, dengue is currently endemic, such as APAC and um, LEDAM and um, other various regions of the world. So today I want to show you um, a, a method on how we were able to tell a complicated story uh, simply and uh, powerfully through the eyes of a child. We wanted to go beyond just telling a story, um, and we really wanted to um, reel the audience in into an experience and take people out of a conference room, out of an auditorium, and into the world of Camilla, a little girl that lives in a country where uh, dengue is endemic. So before we dive into the actual video, I wanted to show you a little bit uh, behind the scenes what went on in and what went into this video. So a little bit of background, as I mentioned, Amy Atwood couldn't be here um, today, um, but last year um, she presented some creative um, communications and, and artwork that um, was done to raise uh, awareness around dengue, um, some documentary style videos visiting two families uh, on opposite sides of the world and reflecting on their experience with dengue. In addition, she also showed how the use of animation uh, was very powerful in bringing stark facts to life. Um, what we really learned after you know, years in communications and by the work that you present today is communications is only powerful and possible when people care. And so we decided that um, we need to continue this forum of communications by taking people inside the homes of these families that are affected by dengue and showing them how this disease stopped them in their tracks, affected their income, prevented their kids from going to school, and on a larger level, economies, what, what they lose in terms of um, productivity um, and possibility, really. So I might tell you, of, of course, I can tell you the, the stark facts and, and the numbers of dengue, et cetera, um, but you might not remember these at the end of a day, at the end of a big meeting, um, or in the grand scheme of things. But what we often do remember is the pain and the emotion that we see, that we witness. And that's what we learned today, and that's what, what we learned with, during making this, these videos. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background as to where, what we created and the setting where it was for created. So 2019 was a big year for dengue. Uh, obviously, we uh, just heard of it, that WHO recognized it as one of the top 10 global threats um, to public health. ISNTD um, became involved and is spearheading the push to declare a, a World Dengue Day. Um, and it is obviously indicated that there's a great unmet need given the numbers that are increasing and rising globally. 2019 was also the year that Takeda saw the first readout of its important phase three study uh, involving its uh, dengue uh, vaccine candidate. So in this year, around May 2019, during Takeda's annual leadership meeting, the vaccine's business unit was given a prominent spot during a two-day meeting to shine a light on the important work that they're doing um, to fight um, dengue and the work that goes into it. Now, imagine a two-day meeting full of PowerPoint presentations with corporate strategy, mission, um, progress reports, goals, PowerPoint slides full of bullets and more bullets and charts. How, and this is an internal setting, um, and this video originally was created for internal um, use only. Now, how can we show up differently at that meeting? How can we make them, the leaders of a, of a company, beyond the vaccine business unit, care about the work that the company is doing and the impact it potentially could have on a global level? So then we dove into research and insights. 
we, we know that the audience will be inundated with information. It's not just that business unit, it was every business, business unit within the company would present their priorities and, and the importance of their work. Um, we know that that information overload will lead to retention issues. We also know, that, like I said earlier, that people, people often m remember the, the emotions and the feelings more so than words, words on a slide. So our strategy was tell a story from a viewpoint that was not expected in that room at that time. A, a viewpoint that was not corporate nor medical, but rather personal and relatable. We are going to see it through the eyes of the people that are actually not in that room. We are going to try and take the people out of that conference room and into the world where dengue is prevalent and feared. So our original presentation, um, inspiration rather, um, for the people that were here last year, um, Takeda had created a documentary style video that featured the little girl Camilla. Um, she's living in, in Colombia with her family and she survived a dengue infection. The documentary was so beautifully done and we were so touched by Camilla's bright spirit, optimism, energy, that we decided to create an illustrate in an illustrated world and use her as our heroine and depict the impact of dengue that it has on her world. What we ended up creating um, with the help of an illustrator and an animator and a copywriter, we created a video narrated in the form of a fable. The fable mimics the cadence of a nursery rhyme and is written like a fairy tale where there is threatening undercurrents, intense emotion, and the literal elements of, de of Camilla's dengue, real dengue story. You'll see when we watch the video that stark dengue facts will contrast with the innocence of Camilla's life and the rhyme and illustrations. We talked about creating an experience. So a video is only a video, but we imagine the setting that we were in. We started the video with sound effects. The room went dark and all you could hear was rain. And these sound effects increase. Suddenly you hear far distant um, honking of cars, city noises, kids playing, and the sound of mosquitoes, which is a very annoying sound. <laughs> Um, throughout the video, you'll also see um, symbolism and the use of illustration. So you'll see on the top um, right and the bottom left. So each illustration had a meaning behind it. While we don't explain that during the video, there, there was a lot of thought that went into it. One represented dengue, the other one re represented death. Um, and these um, two characters surround Camilla throughout her journey, throughout her day. Um, to a point where, obviously, uh, we'll talk about dengue itself. Now, what, it, what is important to also remember is the setting where we presented it. I, I mentioned it was an internal meeting at first. Um, top 400 leaders of the entire organi organization discussed um, the, their priorities, and it was set in a huge conference room, a huge auditorium, with a larger-than-life screen. That screen that you see behind me was a curved screen that was 65 feet wide and 15 feet tall. In, in addition, and this was any creative's you know, dream, um, this room was also equipped with ceiling tiles that were able to reflect light, plus an AV system, sound system that was just um, top-notch, um, quality. Now, I'm going to stop it there and I'm going to let you watch the video and then I'll continue a little bit afterwards, um, but I think I, I don't want to hype it up too much. So let's dive into the video. And I'm going to try and, and I'm going to try and recreate it if we can dim the lights a little bit, um, but unfortunately, obviously, we don't have a 65 feet screen. Open my eyes and count to ten. I hope the monsters are gone by then. 
that creatures that buzz and suddenly bite. Even my parents can't hide their fright. Families are sad. My mom tells me so. This all happened not long ago. Many can't work and must stay in bed. Too sick to move, they sleep instead. But when I'm outside, I get to play. All those scary bugs can go away. I'll just run and climb and fly so high. Can't catch me, let them try. All this fuss for a little bite. A tiny bug, I win that fight. I just want to play with friends. Fun is something that never ends. At school, I must learn all this stuff. Do this, remember that, enough! These bugs are boring anyway. They are just too small to ruin my day. At last, the week is done. Hooray! But why do I ache so much today? I'm too hot and tired to climb a tree. Mom and Dad, please take care of me. Now I must go straight to bed. No fun. Good night all. Sweet dreams, everyone. I hope tomorrow I feel better than today. I hope for many tomorrows when I can play. You can ex as you can expect, was pretty unexpe unexpected at that setting. Um, and we actually got the feedback that this session was, was the highest rated session across the entire two days. It got people on the edge of their seats and we we're still getting feedback from uh, people in the room and leaders that they were so touched by the presentation, which involved obviously more than this, but he delivered so the president um, of the Vaccines Business Unit at Takeda, Rajiv Ankaya, who, you'll, who you see on the screen, his entire presentation after this also carried through the entire animation and illustration. So it was not a regular uh, presentation like people would expect. Um, so people continue to ask about this video, continue to ask about Camilla, who's a real girl living in, in Colombia. And so we thought, what a shame if this would end in at that point point in this conference room, and of course it didn't. Um, but how can we recreate this experience? Um, I mean, imagine just being in that room with the, with the ceiling tiles and the sound effects, 3D sound effects. And um, so we, we really put our heads together again and dove deep, into, um, dove deep into the nostalgia aspect of it again. And so how many of you, let me just put this on full screen again. Oh, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. So thinking about, you know, how can we continue this theme? How can we continue to use the video um, and build upon it? Um, we dove into our um, childhood. And how many of you love these little pop-up books? 
and the little books with animation on it. So I have a two-year-old son, and not only does he love them, I love them too. So we decided to create this ginormous pop-up book um, that brought to life these elements from the video. In addition, um, and this pop-up book is, I believe it's also six feet wide, um, and so it's actually big to transport, et cetera, which is a key learning afterwards. But um, so this um, pop-up book is now touring across Takeda offices, and um, they'll display the video, and people can actually interact with this book. Um, for example, you'll see some of the facts from the video um, are reflected in here. In the back, you'll see this rotating circle. So it's also motorized with batteries, which is also not easy to ship, apparently. Um, so the, the rotating circle, it means day and night. So it, it explains that obviously the mosquito that um, is the vector for dengue is actually active during the day. So bed nets wouldn't work, um, which is a fact that not everybody knows. And so we also discussed um, on, the, on the book itself, the economic impact, um, the financial impact of dengue um, for families, but also for countries. Um, and you'll see um, the little store, for example, there's a cafe with a closed sign on the door because people couldn't run their business if they're themselves and their families are sick. Um, so this book is touring um, the offices all around the world right now as we speak. And um, yeah, the key learning is before you decide to create a six feet wide uh, pop-up book, think about the logistics of shipping that globally. Um, and, and I've learned a lot about customs. so. If it involves batteries, try to avoid that. Um, so yeah, that's how we are continuing to spread um, the story of Camilla and bring, take her on tour. Um, and the video itself is now also available online, is being shared through social. Um, and we'll, we're continuing to think about how can we bring this to life and even bring it to um, communities and even children. Um, I can again tell you that my two-year-old son loves the Skeeto video. Um, so we can continue to, to share that awareness and story. Um, these are some elements from the video, um, what went into it as well. Um, and I'm going to lastly close with some key learnings beyond just the shipment debacle that we found out. Um, emotions are more memorable than words. Um, it really helped us um, be more memorable in the room and afterwards. Um, also embrace the unexpected. Sometimes we feel that we might be a little bit desensitized uh, from a topic, um, depending on the setting, and we felt that we just wanted to come out of an unexpected corner. Um, and as well, consider different perspectives and viewpoints. I think Christopher this morning already um, elaborated on that too, where it's important to, to see the world through their eyes and not impose your view on a disease or a situation. So here we really try to look through Camilla's eyes and see the impact um, of dengue and the, the dengue disease that it has around her. And that brings me to a close. If you want to see any of these videos, including the original documentary style videos of one family in Sri Lanka and then another family, um, the Camilla family in Colombia, please visit TakedaVaccines.com. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to shoot me a note. Thank you.